Val Secar. Bombay, como siempre, es una ciudad caótica con un tráfico infernal. Uh, los conductores se mueven como si estuvieran participando en una gincana. Y el conductor que ahora mismo tengo a mi lado me está mirando extrañado, puesto que estoy hablando evidentemente a la, a la grabadora. Eh, mucha polución. Son las 4 menos 5. Tengo la entrevista con él a las 4 y media, pero me apresuro a irme antes, ya que quiero estar puntualmente en el lugar. Es un hombre fascinante que, bueno, llegaré a describir, a describir su personalidad a través de, de la pluma. This is Marine Drive, right? This is Marine Drive. This is the beach here? Ah, uh, beach. No. Uh, this is beach. Yeah. Uh, you see that? That area, the big chopati. Yeah, what do you call that? Yeah. Chopati, chopati. Here, no, chopati. Ahora voy por Marine Drive. En el día muy soleado, también caluroso. Se ve gente en la playa. Y la bahía de Bombay es... You're supposed to take some books and pay me. Yes, yes, yes. I Let suppose. me get that out of the way first. Okay, as you like. And then you okay. can get on with Okay. Internationally known, I'm Oh, I see. I see, but it's a pity because there are no more copies there. Yes, I mean, from you will have more no copies. I have to make more. Yeah. So next time I come, I, I'll get it. <laughs> so now. So now, yes. You want to write an article for a for a magazine? Yeah, I for a magazine, not only that, because I am, you know, I got very many, let's say, interviews. Yes. With oh, I see many people. Many people. Therefore, I'm writing a book about the great teachers of India. I see. I see. So you know my impressions and what they say. You're writing a book. Then? Yes, I'm I going see. through that. I'm going through that. I see. So you know, I met different interviews to different people. I was with the. Shankaracharya of Kanchipuram, oh, yes. as well, and Patavi Joyce in Mysore, nice. a yoga teacher, and Swami Krishnananda in Rishikesh, oh, yes. and uh, even Mother Teresa before she oh. died. Oh, I see, I see. You know, so I am gathering, I mean, the knowledge yes. of all you people who, who are very wise. So yes. I'm going through that. Sure. Okay. Okay. So first, what, yes. what do you think that there are so many Westerners now or from some time ago coming to see you, to listen to you and to be with you? What, what, do you, what is the reason? What do you think that is the reason? Because I don't see, for instance, very many Indians around. No, but then, yes, there are Indians. Yes. I mean, there must have been at least seven or eight Indians this morning. But I mean, much Pure, when they, because they are here all the time. They come yeah. throughout the year. Right, right. The Westerners have to come only during uh, yes, um, the, the cooler season, you see, right. December, January. Yes. But why do you think that the Westerners are coming? Because they they want to get knowledge. They they want to. Yes, they are not satisfied with the with the uh, with the concepts they have at the moment, and they are not satisfied with the religions which they have so far had. So they, so they want to have something, something more. Then I think more books have been published now in the recent years about Vedanta and so having read the books, many people come. I heard that anyway. I I don't know very much about your biography because I asked yes. different people yes. and I try to read different things, but I don't find too many. No. Too many things are written. There's not much. Uh, no, that's uh, so. I'd like, if you are so kind, to give me just a tiny bit about. Very simple. I went to school for. Uh, I matriculated from from the Saint Xavier's High School. Then I went to the Elphinstone College. Four years in Elphinstone College. 
then I went to London, three years in London, London with, School of Economics. With, with college you said before, sorry, I can... In, in India, Elphinstone College. How do, El, Elphinstone? Yes. How do you spell that? E-L-P-H-I-N-S-T-O-N. Oh, I see. And then you went to London? Then I went to London School of Economics for three years. I got my BCom degree from there. I came back. Then I joined the Bank of India, where I served for 37 years. Then I retired in 1977. And I married in 1940. And my wife and I have been together since then. We had three children, two boys and a girl. The eldest son died in 1990. So now I have a, I have a girl who is, who is about uh, 56 now, and a boy who is, will be 50. My age? Yes. My age is my age. That's right. <coughs> so that's it. And then, how did you then got, get involved in knowledge of Vedanta? That I was always interested. Ever since I was young, I was always interested in. Then I met a guru in 1956. No, wait a minute. 19, no, in about early 60s. I was I had a guru for twenty years. After that, I met Maharaj. When, when did you meet Maharaj? I, in in, uh, in October or November, October nineteen seventy eight. One year after my retirement, I was with him till he died. I was with him for nearly four years, not very, not three years, nineteen seventy eight to eighty one. He died in 81. He died in, on 7th September 81, 1981. So, uh, he was supposed to be an enlightened thing. Yes. So, my question would be, how do we know that a person can be an enlightened thing? When there is no sense of personal doership. It, my definition of enlightenment is that there is a total annihilation of the individual as the doer. When there is total acceptance that things happen not because I do it, but things happen because it is God's will or the impersonal functioning of consciousness. So any deeds that happen to this body-mind organ are not my deeds. That is my full understanding. That to me is enlightenment. So after enlightenment, the body continues to function as it did before. The only difference is in my attitude. The attitude is that I am not the doer. I can merely witness whatever happens through this body-mind organism or through other body-mind organisms. I can only witness them as God's will. So that means, therefore, that consciousness is present all the time and is going through or functioning through this body-mind. That's right. Electricity functions through the electrical gadgets. Consciousness functions through all the sentient beings. But how is it that we are so ignorant then about, about our real nature, therefore? Because a created object cannot know or understand the creator subject. This is a created object. This is a created object. So no created object can ever understand or know the creator subject. So what you had to do to know it, to know the creator, to know the subject. So the, 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 when the creator subject has made the creator object feel that he is an individual. The, so God has created the ego, and only God can destroy the ego when He wants it. The creator subject has by hypnosis or maya made the created object think he is an individual subject. So why, why the creator does like that? 
because without that individual ego, life as we know it cannot function. It is only because there are egos that there are interhuman relationships. And if we stop identifying with the ego, what happens then? Then you accept that everything that happens is God's will and nobody does anything. So if I know that I have not done anything, then I need feel no guilt if an action which happens through this body-mind organism hurts somebody. If an action happens through this body-mind organism is applauded by the people, there is no reason for me to feel pride. I didn't do it. And if I know that I don't do anything, I also know that Manuel doesn't do anything. So if something happens to Manuel's body-mind organism, which hurts me, then the hurt will be felt. But I will not be able to hate Manuel because I know that it is not Manuel's doing. So if I accept that nothing happens unless it is God's will, and the body-mind organism is merely an instrument through which God's will functions. So my question would be, who is God? What God is God? God is consciousness or self. God is not an entity. God to me means the source. So whether you call the source consciousness or energy or God makes no difference so long as we understand that what we mean by any word is the source. And can we have any direct experience of that source? Can you reach a direct experience to the merge with the source? The direct experience can happen, but it will not happen to manual. Because in that experience which happens, there is no manual. So long as there is a manual, that experience cannot happen. So that experience happens only when manual is not there, as an individual entity. And when Manuel, when manual is not there, do I have to provoke that state? Or if if Manuel is not there, who is to provoke what? <laughs> if Manuel is not there, yeah, then who is to provoke what? Yeah. So, I mean, if, if you are an enlightened being, what, what is the meaning of enlightened being? You don't function anymore in this world? You or? function exactly as you functioned before. The, what, so what functions? The body-mind mind. organism functions. Earlier you thought you were functioning. As, a, as an individual. Person. As an individual. Now, now you know that you are merely a body-mind instrument through which so, the energy functions. I see. The energy or consciousness or God functions. So Just as electricity functions through all electric uh, gadgets, you accept that it is consciousness of God which functions through all sentient beings, through all human beings. So and, uh, this duality in which we are, I mean suffering and pleasure and everything else, so this comes to be a creation of maya, the mind. Yes, or the ego, or the, the ego. mind in terms of the ego. ego. Sure. So what is mind? Mind is the ego, which makes you think that you are an individual entity. And that identification disappears, or to make it disappear, you have to change your attitude in life? You have to change your... you cannot do anything because you don't exist. I don't exist according to the source, according to the... That. Old, that, so what functions? The source functions. But in that and source, what you think you are are merely a body-mind organism. So, if enlightenment has to happen, it can only happen because God who created the ego destroys the ego. So, then if, if all those people who make sadhana make a big effort yes. to destroy the ego, yes. uh, so is God acting there? They are not acting at all? The, the ego cannot destroy itself. Therefore, there is a there is a verse in the Bhagavad Gita which says, among thousands there is hardly one seeker. Among those who seek, hardly one knows me in principle. That is what Lord Krishna says. So among thousands of beings, only one seeks God. And among those who seek God, they choose the wrong way because it is God's will and their destiny to go along the wrong way until the right way comes along because it is God's will. 
So until then they do their sadhana, they think they are going to be enlightened until they realize that they cannot be enlightened because enlightenment means the total annihilation of the individual who seeks. So to me, enlightenment means the total annihilation of the me, which means the total understanding that all that functions through every human being as, is, as an instrument is that energy or the source. So what is going on in this life, so many egos, so many minds, so many individuals, is like a, like a dream. It is like a dream, you can say it's a movie. It's a movie, it's a dream. So if it is a movie, the movie, the story is written by consciousness. The script is written by consciousness. The movie is produced by consciousness. The movie is directed by consciousness. Consciousness is playing all the characters in the movie and consciousness is witnessing the movie. So, the, the, the teachings of Nisargadatta Maharaj are also your teachings? He yes. taught exactly the same? Yes, but in totally different words. I don't use Maharaj, Nisargadatta Maharaj's words, he used his own words. He spoke in Marathi. So the words that come out of this mouth are not my words, they just come out. Do you have to do anything with them? No, I don't have to do anything. But uh, you, you, you have to make an effort to study, to prepare yourself to go to London, to the London School of Economics. All that happened. All that happened. But it happened by chance? It happened because it was God's will. I may have wanted to do all that, and yet it did not have happened. Yeah, but uh, for instance, myself, yes. I wanted to meet you, I wanted yes. to come here. Yes. I do personally have nothing to do with that. No, if, it, if you were not destined to meet me, you would not have met me. You met me not because it is your will, but because it was God's will. You are mentioning that when we are born, at the moment of consumption, our future is stamped. That is correct. That is my concept. But what happens before conception then? You don't exist at all? Nothing happens? There is no type of consciousness in yes, individual? Yes, all there is is consciousness. There is no individual consciousness, correct? All there is is the injury, uh, is consciousness. And so your individual consciousness comes to be only when you are born? That's right, only when the body is born. When the body is born? Yes. And you as individual disappear when you are dead? That's right. And then the individual consciousness is no longer there. The individual consciousness merges with the total consciousness. When you die? Yeah. So after death there yeah. is nothing but consciousness? The, before you were born there was only consciousness. Now when you are alive there is only consciousness. But you think you exist. Right. After your death consciousness existed as before. So this... If there is one kitchen gadget, the kitchen gadget is, is bad, so it's thrown in the waste bin. What happens to electricity? Nothing. Electricity functions through other gadgets. So one body-mind organism dies. What happens to consciousness? It functions through other body-mind organisms. So, do you believe in reincarnation? Reincarnation of what? Of the physical body. Physical body is never reincarnated. Physical body is dead. It is either burnt or, or buried and then it turns into a skeleton. There is no individual body to be reborn. Another body is born and in that new body there is a new ego. But this ego has any memories from the past? Memories may come but not about the ego. Memories of what happened may come into the next. But I mean memories, uh, suppose for a minute that I don't know, according to the reincarnationists, if, if I had a life in my past life, whatever, I, as an ego consciousness. Yes. Now, and does Manuel know what his previous life was? If Manuel has been, had a previous life, there was another ego, not Manuel. But in this ego of Manuel right now, yes. Will no Man memory from the past? Sir, 
some past events may happen, but it was not something manual did. Not something manual did. Memory is always there, stamped at the moment of conception. So, in the words of the Buddha, events happen, deeds are done, there is no individual doer thereof. Events happen, deeds are done. They will have their effects. For the effects to happen, new bodies will be born. New events and deeds will happen through the new body. So those, those will be carried forward as effects. And new bodies, so that is causation. Deeds, effects. Effects become deeds, further effects. That causation goes on in different bodies. In different bodies, the, the causation goes on. But there's not a chain, there's no connection between this Manuel now or this Ramesh now and another individual that you you were in your past life. That was not Ramesh. In a past, if you had a past life, it was not Manuel. Manuel doesn't remember anything about the past life. Why is it that people, Buddha said that he, he lived very many lives before? There, what he meant, there were lives before. Whose lives? In different lives there were different egos. Um, um, but the, the, the real meaning of, as far as I can understand it, this type of reincarnation is that you evolve. Who evolves? The ego. Who evolves? The ego evolves? Is it the same ego? It's a different ego. Is it the same ego? Was it Manuel in a previous body? Is the in the next body, that is, will it be Manuel or will it be someone else? Robert or Roberto or whatever? Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. And if it is Roberto, Roberto will not know that Manuel existed. But Manuel or Roberto don't have memory of Me somebody else's... Memories of certain actions may have happened, may remain stamped at the book, but not as his actions. That is my point. Whatever memories you have of a previous life were not Manuel's life. So why is it that I am born? Why is it that I am born to a certain parent in a certain place, in a certain moment? Because that is, you are a character that is born in this movie, which consciousness has created. You are a character in the movie, which is supposed to last as long as it is supposed to last. And if I realize that, that I am a character in the movie, yes. I I finish with that character that because, is correct. because I realize that I am consciousness. That's right. Nothing but consciousness. That is correct. So then, identification with an individual body mind organism as a doer, that it disappears. The sense of personal doership disappears. What what you have to do not to be the doer, not just to change your sense of, of doership. In other words, if, if I identify as Manuel, if I, I identify myself with my actions, in order to be a wise person, in order just to be God-realized or enlightened or, or to know that I am the source of consciousness, or I am consciousness, what should I do? What should who do? This, what should who this do? individual mind. The, it's just a mind. What, can a mind do something? the thought cannot I realize that no. who realizes there is no who to realize if there is realization it happens because it is God's will anything that happens through this body mind organ is not manuals be Buddha said deeds are done there is no individual doer thereof Shankara, Shankaracharya, yes. or Ramana Maharshi, or yes. and then Madhavacharya or Ramanuja who kept different yes. uh, positions. They're different concepts. Different concepts. Yeah. But but actually all of them came to mean the same? All of them mean different things because they are concepts. Whatever any sage has said at any time. Whatever any scripture of any religion has said at any time is a concept. A concept being something which some people will accept, some people will not. Therefore they say, I don't believe in Advaita, I am a uh, Ramanujam. 
I believe in Ramanujam. I believe in someone else. You see, so that's a concept. So some concepts are accepted to some body, some mind, others are approved. So whatever anybody has said, whatever any scripture of any religion has said, is a concept which some people may accept, some people may not. So what is that a concept? Only the truth. And what is the truth? The only truth is the impersonal awareness. I exist. I am. You call it impersonal awareness. I am. That's all. Not I am Manuel or I am Ramesh. I am. I exist. Nobody will deny. An atheist, if he comes here, he says, I don't believe God exists. I said, fine. That is your privilege. But will you deny that you exist? He cannot deny that he exists. In other words, that there is a there is an awareness of existence. I exist. That nobody will deny. Yeah, but for instance, my awareness of existence comes to it comes to be I exist as such and such a person. No, that is later. Such and such a body. I know that is that is the Maya. That is the the divine hypnosis. Uh -huh. Manuel is divine hypnosis. Uh -huh. I am is the truth. I am Manuel is a concept. So when the concept disappears, the truth that is manifests. correct. That is correct. I am, which is covered by Manuel. So by God's will, if Manuel disappears, I am remains, which is the truth. Uh, let me ask you this question: Are you an enlightened being? There is no enlightened being. Uh, Self-realized or whatever. Self-realization or enlightenment to me means the total acceptance that I am not the doer. Everything that happens through this body-mind organism is the deed of consciousness or energy or God that I, Ramesh, do nothing. That is my understanding, yes. And can you be conscious of that all the time? Yes, all the time. All the time. Even the thoughts are working through your individual ego mind? No, the thoughts happen. Just happen. But they are not my thoughts. Deeds happen. They are not my deeds. That is the total acceptance. That they, they work through you. They act through this, not through. me. Through, through mean, this body-mind organism. Yes, but I mean you, I mean this body-mind organism. Yes, sure. So all that exists is the body-mind organism. And so long as the body-mind organism exists, it is programmed in a particular way, and deeds that happen through this are God's deeds. So, in other words... When you I say mean, God, you, you, you refer yourself not to a personal God, but a consciousness or... Yes, God. the source. The source, yeah. It, it is always the source which functions through every body-mind organism. Therefore, the source has created every human being as a uniquely programmed instrument. No two human beings are alike. Each human being is a uniquely programmed instrument, uniquely programmed so that through that body-mind organism only certain actions will happen. How do those actions happen? If you have a personal computer, what happens? You put in an input. What can the computer do except bring out an output strictly the way it is programmed? So that is what energy or God or consciousness does. He puts in an input. What input does he put? He sends a thought to you. Or he makes the body-mind organism see something or hear something. <coughs> the brain reacts to what is the thought or this, what is seen or heard. And the reaction of the brain, a mechanical reaction of the brain to the input is the output, which Manuel thinks is his action. Whereas it is only the output, which is the reaction of the brain to an input over which Manuel has no control. So any action which happens through this body-mind organism is the mechanical reaction of the brain to an input, a thought or something you see or hear over which you have no control, according to a programming in the body-mind organism over which you have no control. But if anything happens around me, whatever, noise, uh, 
words, uh, sounds. Uh, the brain reacts see. to it. The brain reacts. Ah. That's all. And how does the brain react to it? According to the programming. And what do I mean by programming? You had no choice in being born to particular parents. Therefore, you had no choice about your genes. For the same reason, you had no choice about being born in a particular environment. Therefore, you had no choice about the conditioning you received in that environment. And genes plus environmental conditioning as a child together is what I call the programming. So the brain reacts to an input over which it has no control according to the programming over which also they have had no control. And that output which happens as a result of the reaction of the brain to the input is what manual says, is my action. So where is really manual? It's merely a mechanical reaction of the brain to an input over which it has no control, according to the programming over which you have had no control. So we all are involved in Maya. Yes. But there is uh, like a cosmic Maya for everybody. So there can be like a, a total impersonal consciousness in everybody or it has to be person by person? No, it is always the impersonal consciousness which functions through every body-mind organism like a, like a programmed instrument. Every, therefore, again to repeat Buddha's words, events happen, deeds are done, there is no individual doer thereof. Deeds are done through uniquely programmed human body-mind organisms. So if we disappear, as I mentioned before, when we die, whatever happens in, in, in the so-called astral plane, for instance, my father died last year. Yes. So he disappeared as an That's, individual so consciousness. His, his breath mingled with the air outside. The consciousness within became consciousness, uh, the total of consciousness. And whether there is an astral body or not, there may be. In other words, if you ask me, are there ghosts or angels? There may be. If God or consciousness can create beings with bodies, what is to prevent God or consciousness from creating beings without bodies? So there may be astral beings, there may be angels, there may be ghosts. But they are still part of phenomenality, part of the movie. They are still part of the movie. When I hear, when I hear you speaking like this, of course I, I start thinking a different way. Uh, so comes, here comes the question again. So according to what you are explaining to me, I don't have to do anything, I just be. Just be. In other words, what do you mean by just be? Witness whatever is happening as God's will, over which nobody has any control. How can I do that? You can't do that. Who is to do that? You will do that only if it is God's will. You will be able to do that only if it is God's will. I suppose it's God's will. How is that going to work for me? I mean, me? do you, can any, can a created object know the will of the creator subject? So how can you know how God functions? But, then, but as you are speaking about God, therefore you are using a concept. You are, you are using the concept mm -hmm. of God. Yes. And you, All consciousness. And you are mentioning the source. that God or the consciousness is doing this and is doing that. Yes. How do you know? It is a, I told you, anything that any sage has said at any time, Anything that any scripture of any religion has said is a concept. It is a concept. You accept the concept or say, no, I don't be accept the fine. So when, what concept you accept is also God's will or the will of that source. So if we are able to accept this concept that you are really not doing anything, then there is no guilt. There is no pride, there is no hate, there is no envy. Whom will you hate if you know that no one else, no one does anything? How can you hate anybody? 
So you come to be an instrument in, in the hands of God. That is it. Every human being is only a uniquely programmed instrument through which consciousness or God or the source functions. If I see you yes. now, as I asked you the question before, if you are as, you know, according to whatever the scriptures or people relate to that, if you are an enlightened being or self-realized being, uh, people are looking for self-realized beings. Yes. And they say, that person got self-realized, the other person got self-realized. I mean, how are we able to judge in you such can't. a way? But how do we dare to say this person is self-realized? You can't. And people say so. Yes, but you can't. You can't know. Yes. You can't know. Then therefore, there are so many, there are so many false gurus. Yeah. Because you can't know. Only the person will ex who accepts that he is not the doer, that no doing happens as, a, by, as an individual, only that person is self-realized. But we are not in that person's mind to know that is happening. That, that is correct. So nobody can know whether somebody is enlightened or not. Right. Because yes, that is so. For instance, when Punjaji, yes. uh, he died in September or something, yes. there are a few people in the state saying that they got self-enlightened through him. I see. So? So I they became self-enlightened? Yes. Who became self-enlightened? So if there is someone who says, I became self-enlightened, the me is still there, isn't it? Yes. And yeah, because I identify with the me. So if there is a doer who says, I am identified, then according to me, enlightenment has not happened. Self-realization has not happened. Well, they because my definition of self-realization or enlightenment is the total annihilation of the sense of personal doership. But that is something that you live very subjectively, subjectively and personally. That's right. Therefore... Nobody can judge it from outside no, and say, no, you Ramesh can't. is a self-realized being. No one can decide whether someone else is realized, self-realized or not. So how do we say that Ramana Maharshi was a self-realized being? How do you, Because you feel that, that that is so. But it's a concept. How do you know Ramana Maharshi was self-realized? You can't. People say so. People say so. Yeah. People say so. Or even Sai Baba, people say that he's God, I mean, in, in the sense that he materializes things, and, and people believe that they are in the presence, the presence of, of God, they, they create that idea. That's right, the See, mind, the creation. Creation, a concept again. Sure, that is my point. It is a concept. The only thing which is not a concept, the only truth is, the impersonal awareness, I am, I exist. That is the only truth. And that can only be experienced by yourself. That's right. And how do you know you reach that point, you are not anymore a mesh or manual, you are that consciousness? So that only you can know. But no one else can know. Do you have a special experience about that? or My experience is only one thing, manual. I have absolutely not the slightest doubt that all actions happen through me because that is the will of the Source or God. I do nothing. Ramesh does nothing. Ramesh is merely the name given to this body-mind organism. Everything that happens through this body-mind organism is because of God's will, not Ramesh's will. That is my final total acceptance. If you think that is enlightenment to self-realization, then there is self-realization. But if your concept of self-realization is the ability to walk on water, then this body, this, then, then there is no self-realization because I am not able, this body-mind organism is not able to walk on water. <laughs> no. Yeah, I know what you mean. No, 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 that's not my... So it depends on what you mean or understand. So the, 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 Ramesh, the essence of your teachings, yes. which do they come to be then? 
the essence of the teaching is only one. Nothing happens unless it is the will of God. No one does anything. There are no actions which are an individual's actions. So that's also a very Christian concept because only God's, uh, God's will be done. That's right. So uh, what is the basis of my un understanding of it? Thy will be done. Thy will be done. That is, uh, that is the basis of whatever I say. You see? So if, if only God's will is being done, how can there be any manual's action? Yeah, correct. How can there be any, any action which Manuel can say is my action? When you say is my action is when you have a problem, when you have the identification. That's right. So the only basic understanding which I have is thy will be done. That is the basis of my understanding. So surrender and that's it. That's it. Surrender and watch what is happening as God's will. And you enjoy life like that. Yeah, and enjoying life means accepting whatever happens. Without any as God's effort will. to change it. Without any wanting to change it. Forget the effort. Without even wanting to change it. Without even wanting to change it. So if you see a person is killing somebody there. Yes. You say, it's God's will, I don't care. I yeah, don't mind. Say, but then you are saying it then you are wanting not to do something. But you are watching somebody, something being happened and something being killed. And if you are programmed to go and, then the body will go and interfere. What does man will do? Nothing. If the body is programmed to go and stop the, what is happening, the body will do it. Through a personal will? No. Not through a personal will, because it is God's will. So this body-mind organism will go and interfere only if it is God's will, not because it's the personal will. Whatever is happening, when will this body-mind organism interfere? So, Nothing happens unless it is God's will. Consciousness is there all the time, and we are all instruments through which this consciousness is operating. That is correct. That is correct. That is the yeah. basis of what I am saying, That's which is the same as, thy will be done. Thy will be done. And, uh, I know there are many followers of you yourself. I know some people who really want to come to meet you, yes. and of Nisargadatta Maharaj. How did he used to live, Nisargadatta Maharaj? How how do you mean he, how? He was... Uh, like anybody else. Like anybody else. Like anybody else. <coughs> you, you speak Marathi, he lived here in Bombay. He lived in Bombay. And he used to sell, sell cigars or something like that. That's right. He used to... Local Indian cigarettes. He used to manufacture them and sell them. Sell them. Um, what do you think about the role of a guru? Do we need a guru? Do we need a person? The Indian guide? tradition says that a guru is necessary. Do you consider yourself a guru? Do I consider myself a guru? No. I just sit. People come to me, they listen, and they say they have they have been helped very much. So they consider themselves my disciples. I say, if you consider yourself my disciples, all right, you are my disciples. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. I don't say, look, look, I am a guru, come to me, I'll, take, I'll, I'll give, send you to paradise, or I'll make you a... I don't do that. So you mean, do I advertise myself as a guru? No, I don't. Should we be afraid of death? No, not at all. Because who dies? The body dies. The body that was, before this body was created, whatever existed was consciousness. After this body is dead, whatever exists will still be consciousness. Who dies? The body dies. At one time the body was not there. Yes, but I mean my qu excuse me for insisting on this, but my question would be, I should think the same. 
how to can I how can I get rid of this false consciousness I do have as Manuel? You see, did you create that? I, I just so that false happened. consciousness, this identification with the sense of doership, you did the ego. You didn't create it. I didn't create the ego. I just, I just came. I just so only that power, which is the source, who created the ego, can demolish it. Only that power, the source, or God, or energy, or consciousness, which created the ego can get rid of it. The ego cannot get rid of the ego. And if it doesn't happen, as, as it might happen to you that you got rid of your ego but in this life, so if it doesn't happen to me like many other people, what happens? Then it, will, it is not God's will for it to happen. So, so whether the ego gets demolished or not depends, like everything, on God's will. Whether enlightenment happens or not is, like everything, on God's depends on God's will. So, if we are consciousness, we have nothing else to do but being consciousness. That's right, just be and just witness whatever is happening without wanting to change it. If a change is necessary, it will happen. If a change is necessary and it is supposed to happen according to God's will, it will happen. Otherwise the change will not happen. So why is it that we are so eager, so thirsty about knowledge? Because... If we are knowledge itself, how is it that we are so eager just to... Because without that, life as we know it will not happen. It is part of life to want to know. And when God created the world? But When did God create the world like this? That, that is a concept. The one concept is that when you are in deep sleep, is there a, is there a manifestation? No. There is no manifestation. Because in your deep sleep there was no manifestation. And the physicists say the manifestation exists only when it is observed. An object exists only when it is observed. In deep sleep you, have, you don't observe it. Therefore for Manuel the manifestation does not exist in deep sleep. Okay, so finally maybe Ramesh I would like you just to maybe to say like a, a few words for those seekers, true seekers in this, in this path. Yes. There never has been a seeker. Always the seeking has happened because it is God's will. What kind of seeking happens? Whether the seeking is for God or enlightenment, or whether the seeking is for money, or the seeking is for power, depends on the way the body-mind organism has been programmed by God. So only that kind of seeking will happen according to the way the body-mind organism is programmed. And the programming has been done by God. So the seeking is happening. There have never been a seeker. And that is the whole problem. The individual thinks he is the seeker. Whereas actually oh, seeking has been happening. Whatever the seeking, seeking has been happening because that is the way the body-mind organism is programmed and that is God's will. The seeking doesn't happen because there is a seeker. Seeking happens because it is God's will and what kind of seeking happens depends on the way the body-mind organism is programmed. Who programs it? God? Of course. So God programs this organism to look for money, this other to look for sex, this other to look for sure, spirituality. That, yes, and I told you what the programming is, genes plus childhood conditioning. Neither of which is in your control. Yes. Programming yes. Yes. Child is... Child conditioning... Uh, the environmental, environmental conditioning. conditioning. By, by men, by surrounding, by people, by things around you. Sure, but and then the child hasn't uh, chosen to do that. 
So it's not been the child's choice. So God has decided to whom that child will be born and in what environment the child will receive its conditioning. So we have to wait for God's will to change That is us. correct. I guess we can't do anything. Because that is correct. What happens will happen. That's right. Huh? Okay, Manuel. Oh, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. So lovely. So I had to, I have to, to listen again and again to all your words, you know, to, yes. try, to have clear concepts yes. of what you are trying to That's say right. to me. May I take a picture of you? Sure. I am not a British photographer, but I think we'll do a good one. Sure. <laughs> I'd like to take a picture with you, but we don't have anybody here. I'd like to take a picture with you. I know. We don't have anybody. Take a nice one. How, how do you remember Ms. Algadatta Maharaj in, in your memory? Do you have any memories about him? Not particularly. No. Do you think one day you can come to Spain? I doubt it. Yes. I'll be 81 in May. 81 in May. And I'm going to Germany, Germany I just... for two weeks. Yes. After that I come back. You come back here afterwards. There have been many inv very kind invitations yes. to go elsewhere. Yes. But I can't. You cannot. Well, we come here to see you then. That's right. We just... Maybe... Maybe this year I come with a group of uh, Spanish people coming to India, 20 or 30 people. I see. So, uh, if I come, I would like to bring all of them to meet you. Is that possible? Sure. Yes, yeah, so I'll bring them over just to, yes, yes, to meet you. It yes, would sure. be nice to have all the group with, with you here. It would be lovely. Sure. <laughs> okay, so, Manuel. Thank you very much. Not at all. Okay. Thank you very much. I really pay you my homage, my respects. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. I, feel, I feel very close to you, really. You're welcome. So, Thank you. I'll be with you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.